Although the body works in great shape on this bike, there's need for some paint touch-up, both a little bit of green and a lot of white on the bottom of the fairings. What I'm doing here is doing a paint touch-up on the edge of the fairing. You can see I have a layer of primer down. Now I'm putting down a layer of green and that'll be followed up with a layer of clear coat, all following the directions of the manufacturer to the letter. The match on these colors is exceptionally close. There's really when it's done, aside from the, the roughness of the texture of the, the paint touch up, you can't tell the difference in the color. It's great. Okay, I'm shining the, uh, the test card in the sun. As you can see here, I've laid down, well, not on purpose here, but a funny coat of base coat. Now on top of that, it's white, so you can't see it when I shine it directly at it. But on top of that, if you look really close here, I've laid down two coats of the blue, the marker blue. These are the little marker pens. You can see right about here, about the middle of it, you can see it's darker. This long strip was one coat, and then I did a second coat just in the middle, just to show you the difference in color. And I'll show you how it compares against the bodywork. As you can see, it is bang on. The middle part, two coats. Okay. They always recommend you doing these test sprays. And there's the damage I need to repair with my marker. So watch how I do it. I gotta lay down the white base coat first. It's a little rough. And I may come back and do this at some point in the future, or if the owner decides, and, uh, and fill this in properly and sand it down. But um, I've sanded this down a little bit with 600 grit, and I'm going to lay down my base coat, and then on top of that I'll put the, uh, I'll put the color coat. Now at first glance, the underside of this side cover, almost in the, into the belly of the bike, you notice this scratch that runs across. And initially you think, well, it's just a scratch. But if you look close, you can see some puddling of the plastic here. And what's happened, I suspect, is that this bike was backed off a trailer and the ramp was so steep, it caused the ramp to catch the belly of the bike and crack this here, it caused flexing up here, which cracked the side of the fairing. And this in turn was repaired. And if I look over at the other side here, I have a similar, similar sort of thing here with uh, some scratching where it probably hit the ramp here, here, and here, and then this here scratch along the side. Well, this, if you look very closely, is puddling of, of the ABS. And that was clearly a repair. And if I flip it over, you can see that's exactly the case. So, once again, nothing to worry about. Um, this happens actually to all sorts of bikes that are uh, put on the back of, of cars or, or back of trailers or trucks. And uh, you really got to be careful about how steep the, uh, the ramp is. So, you can see here, there's some damage here along the, the very, very bottom plane of the fairing. And the same goes for the, its matching side. Then, along the side here, these, there, there are these long gouges. These here too, as I've mentioned earlier, were clearly an attempt to weld. And there's indication here, there's tiny holes drilled here, here, and here. And it's, uh, it's a good practice when you do have a crack in plastic or metal, to prevent that crack from expanding is to drill right at the head of it, a perfect circle. And that circle prevents the, that tight stress. It actually prevents the crack from expanding. So that's what this person did, and then they turned around and welded it up with, uh, with either soldering iron or a heat gun or something. Anyway, regardless, this is not going to stay like this. And I have two options. I can have the whole side repainted. I can buy a new panel if I can find one because Kawasaki doesn't make them anymore. 
or I can have the whole side repainted and I have a body guy that's very, very good at that and that's an option. But a very cost-effective option is to paint this myself using a spray bomb and then polishing it down. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of experience working with polishing compounds on electric wheels. So I'm pretty confident I could get this paint repaired from this part down. Now any bodywork guy will say, look, if you're going to paint the whole side, you're going to have to mask off all the coloring or remove these decals and then paint the whole white portion and then mask off the green. Well, these decals I don't think are available anymore and these ones are actually in fantastic condition. So I think the best thing to do is somehow mask off these decals. But there's another trick that you can do if you want and that is to study the, the lines or the planes of the bike. So when you approach this bike, the most, the, the most you really you see, your eye can really discern is about halfway up this blue uh, decal and upwards. All this underside is difficult to see unless you stand way, way back. And it's a different plane. So if you study this closely, there's the bottom plane here, which is very flat. There's a slight angle part. It goes up a little bit more. There's this, uh, this NACA duck here. And then the plane flattens out on the side and then rolls up as the, the fairing moves up the side of the bike. What I could do as a trick of the eye is get perfectly matching paint, and I'll talk about that in a second. Mask off this strip here underneath this duck. Go from this here, this here groove here, mask this off all along the side here, and paint. First of all, repair this a little better and fill it in with some body fill. Sand it down smooth and paint this plane. And the optical illusion is even if the, the, there's a, a separation from where I mask and where it's painted, and I think I can get away with that, and I'll tell you how I do that in a second. Even if there is, your eye probably won't be able to see it. And, worse comes to worse, if I do a terrible job at it, and I'm not happy with it, I'll take it to my body guy, and he'll repaint it, and he'll either mask off these, these factory decals, or I'll hunt some new ones down somewhere. And I'm going to do the same on the other body panel too. Whoever owned this bike had stickers on here so I, there's some little bit of sticker residue I'm going to have to clean off and I use Goo Gone for that. After the Goo Gone, because it's very oily, I'll take a degreaser, a wax remover, grease remover, oil remover, clean all that off, get it all nice and sparkly clean with no wax, no grease, no nothing, just nice bare paint. I'll mask off where I want to work and then I'll start working on it. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. Now the paint I've used is Colorite. Colorite paint is uh, is a fantastic solution if you want actually even if you want to bring it to your body shop guy because they sell proper two-part paints for a, for a proper body shop application. But they sell you these kits for your bike and they are color matched. And uh, as you watched just a few moments ago, I repaired uh, with amazing results just little chips with my green pen kit that came from Colorite. This, now this is the uh, clear coat that goes over top of it, but I have the base coat and the color coat and the clear coat and the primer all from Colorite in a kit. Now it comes with sandpaper and some tack cloths. I already have that stuff, but the, the, the product matched primer, undercoat, uh, color coat, and clear coat, um, is uh, it, it all works well together and that's what I'm going to use. And well, like I say, what I'm going to do, first things first, I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to mask this off, the area I'm going to paint. Then I'm going to start repairing this because I don't want to get any any Bondo or the, actually it's not Bondo I'm using, but it's a, it's a, a glazing putty to fill in these grooves and sand them down. I don't want to get to any of that stuff on the good part of the panel. So I'm going to mask this off, start working, I'm going to double check the repair here. I'm going to flex it with my hands to see if it gaps at all. If it doesn't gap, I'm going to fill it, sand it, prime it, sand it again, double check with a flashlight on the edge. It's perfect, perfect. I'm going to do my best to get as perfect as possible surface to work on. Then I'm going to start my repair with my paint. 
And this colorite stuff is pretty much, you have to do it when the weather's good and dry and sunny and warm uh, for a period of time. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll lay down all the coats and there's only a few minutes in between each coat, right, right up to the clear coat. Let that sit for four or five days and then I'll get my polishing compound, light cutting compound and buffing compound and I'll see how smooth I can make it. Now first things first is Colorite mentions you should do a test spray and I'm going to do that too. They provide some test cards to spray onto and that's what I'm going to do. What I'm doing here after degreasing, uh, it's just an old habit I have. I'm just rubbing it down with some 100% uh, strength uh, rubbing alcohol. So uh, just does a little extra clean. Using Bondo brand UV curing putty, which you can buy for about $6. Uh, I'm just gently filling in a couple layers into these scratches to fill the, the sort of the, the gaps down inside them so they'll sit flush with the rest of the body. Now looking at this here you can see I've masked off the areas where I sanded, prepared and filled uh, which I showed you earlier. Um, I've since sanded and refilled a second coating, sanded and worked slowly and took my time and prepared this whole length on the belly pan and it's it's really very very smooth on the fingers and uh, the whole idea is you shouldn't be able to feel where the repairs were with your filling and sanding now you can see just uh, I used a block to really get a nice sort of consistent flow to the body uh, using your fingers sometimes you can get uh, a ripple effect because if you're if you're sanding against the repairs I guess you tend to wear finger hold, fingers sort of grooves into the bodywork and I didn't want to do that so using a block or wrapping my sandpaper around a block sort of drastically reduced that I mean you still have to roll the block with the body with every stroke but generally speaking you don't get ripples along the length of it which are very noticeable when this becomes glossy even though it's on the underside of the, the bike now I started uh, and you saw me uh, apply the the putty. I use a 3M UV curing Bondo which was about six dollars at my local body supply shop or my local car uh, parts depot and I used varying degrees of sandpaper. The initial rub to take off that initial sort of sticky layer on the outside of the cured putty I used an 80 grit. I followed that up with a with a 100 grit to smooth out the lumpiness, the harder parts and then from there I went to a 320, a 400, a 600 and finished up with an 800 grit um, wet dry sandpaper. I didn't wet it, I just used dry. And what I have here is a finish that has tooth, something for the paint to grab onto, but at the same time it's very smooth. And um, it's one of these things, it's, it's a patience trumps all in this process. If you see an error as opposed to saying it'll be okay, you're better off to do it over again or to repair that little area. So if you rub your finger over and feel a little hook or a ridge, it's going to be very visible. The paint is very thin and when it becomes glossy and dries, it really shows these things. You can see them a mile away and I don't want that. I want to do the best job I can without spending a lot of money on a complete paint job to a body shop. So what I'm doing initially, now and I'll, I'll tell you what Colorite, as I mentioned, I bought the Colorite kit. Colorite kit recommends you doing your surface prep extensively, cleaning, tack clothing, which I'm going to do, laying down two coats of primer, making sure the substrate's covered, letting that sit two, 20 minutes between coats, another 20 minutes prior to the base coat, which this one requires, and maybe two coats of base coat, so 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and then two coats of color coat, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and then finally another 20 minute wait before two coats of clear coat. We've, if you add all that up, that's several hours work, which I'm prepared to do, but it has to be consistently one after the other. There's only so much flash time between coats you can allow for each of those layers to bond to one another. So you want to add up all your time you're going to have to put into this and then lay it all out in the afternoon. And you want your conditions to be dry and warm, which is what I'm going to do. Today is actually cloudy and humid and there's a good chance of rain. 
so I'm not going to start painting this. I am, however, and I talked to Colorite about this, and they said it's a good idea, is I'm going to lay down a guide coat of primer. So I'm going to mask all this off. Uh, I'm going to lift up the tape I've put down and just move it up about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch to get away, because what's happened is as I was sanding, I nicked the edge of this, this paper, and the paper didn't burn all the way through, but that frayed edge Will affect the edge of the paint. So if I just move that edge up a little bit, retape, move it up a little bit, and then just lightly touch that shiny paint exposed underneath with a little bit of 800 grit just to give it a little tooth, and then I'll start painting. And what will happen is with this guide coat, I'll see how the surface looks when all these repairs are hidden, and all that's left is the bumps and lumps. If there are some more bumps and lumps, I'll let that dry for four or five hours, Resand it, the rough areas. I'll hit the areas I don't have to sand with 600 grit and then respray and start the, the, the two or three hour full paint process. Uh, and they're okay with that. They said that's completely acceptable. I've had to work some of these areas with a Dremel simply because in this here pocket right here, there's a, a screw that sits deep, deep inside that, and that edge I want to be nice and smooth. So. So I've done that, and I'm ready to roll. This one was actually uh, took several coats of, of putty compared to the other side. The other side just took two, and it was it's really smooth. This one here, um, just some of the areas, there's a real deep groove, and you can see even here, just blocking it. This wasn't damaged, this great big patch here. But it was, uh, it was sitting proud enough. There may have been a little warp in the plastic that I've uh, smoothed out, but the whole thing should look good when it's done. And I'll show you how it looks after I lay down that, that uh, first coat of primer, just to cover all this and see how it looks. Now if I find one coat of primer doesn't cover all this visually, I'll lay down two coats as if I was going to do my whole paint job and then reassess. If um, everything looks good, I'm still going to let it sit and dry and retooth it on a sunny day to do the proper paint job. but. Uh, Anyway, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I'm holding the camera here just to show you the kind of job this turned out. It turned out actually very well, better than I thought. There will be some uh, work needs to be done on both panels though. Here would be the uh, right hand panel. It's actually very good all along here, very, very smooth. The paint flattened out quite nice, or the primer I guess, flattened out quite nicely. However, uh, when I did a repair, you can see it right about there. You start to see some some scratching and some. Uh, I'll see if I can zoom in there. There you go. You can see just some work that needs to be done there. And then up towards the front of the panel here, near the belly, uh, right around the screw hole, you can see. Oh. Uh, yeah, right about there. You can see some tiny little pinholes that need to be filled. Okay. This is the whole beauty of this primer process. It really, really shows you any imperfections in the paint. Now, what I'm going to do with these is I will uh, I'll work only with sandpaper at this point. Uh, with the exception of these holes, I'll probably just use just the tiniest bit of putty fill to fill those in and then I'll give them a tough, uh, just a, I'll, I'll ease that edge with some sandpaper and, uh, and I'll do a little bit of sanding here and there just to smooth those out make that perfect because in a year's time somebody will see that and it'll bother them. <clears throat> it'll be the kind of thing that they'll find themselves down on a Saturday uh, afternoon filling or, or trying to work with some nail polish. Rather get it right the first time. From my experience, it takes me at least two times to get these just perfect. And once the base coat is perfect and the surface is perfect and this primer down is nice and smooth, then I'll get much, much better results on the layers that follow. Anyway, all other than that, this panel's pretty good. The other panel up here isn't quite as good. There's a lots of areas here, and I'm going to hold the, the camera in such a way that you can see that a lot of my sanding, I didn't quite go low enough. You can see some sanding lines through there. So what I'm going to have to do is just hit that. I'll start with 400 and work my way up to 800 
just to smooth that out. You can see here the sanding actually is showing through the primer sanding marks. So that's something I want to smooth out. Both of these, with the exception of those pinholes I showed you, both of these panels will all be sanded to smooth. I, I'll do very, very little. I, I won't do any filling actually on this one. This will all be sand. All these imperfections wouldn't be anywhere near as deep as a sheet of paper, which means to me that it's, it's something that all can be uh, accomplished by sanding. But I do want to get all these imperfections out. So here, um, laying my panel out in some sunlight, I start going at it with some sandpaper, starting with the heavy stuff and moving up to the finer stuff. Once it feels smooth to my finger, I run my tack cloth over top of it. And when the tack cloth is all done, I wash it and then run a second tack cloth over top of that. It's only two minutes, but this little bit of extra work makes all the difference in the world. So here we go. Hopefully the first layer of Final Prime. I make my first shot going with the tape so I don't shoot it underneath and to seal down that edge and then I uh, work my way down underneath the body and then direct on 90 degrees to the panel itself. Now that turned out beautifully. One little blemish right there which I'll probably just quickly touch and uh, it's, it looks like just a bubble of paint that went down and uh, I can get that but everything else is perfect. It's all nice and smooth. It looks just like it was molded in gray plastic, which is exactly what you want. Um, this paint is very nice to work with. It settles down and flat and spreads out quite nicely. Um, it kind of cures uniformly. I've retaped and remasked the edge as I get ready to put down my base and color coat, but I think I'm ready to go with this one. So I start with my first layer of base coat. Um, once again, painting with the tape. Just to seal that down. Uh, this stuff goes on quite thin, so there's no doubt in my mind I'm going to need a second coat, which the manufacturer actually recommends. But it goes on nice and spreads easily and uh, doesn't run. And now on goes the first color coat. Uh, my spray out told me I should do about two coats. One and a half would be ideal. I think I'm going to go with a full two. Uh, I might regret that later. But uh, doing a proper wet coat seems to have a much, much better finish. Long strokes are the key here. And here you can see me putting on my first clear coat. Uh, back and forth here, just trying to get a wet coat. My secret here, what I found to work, uh, was have this piece in the sunlight. You can really see where you're thin and heavy on your coats. And uh, here you can start to see the sun gleaming. And I can tell you that even after it was dry, this piece is incredibly rich and thick and smooth and glossy. Very, very nice paint. Very, very pleased. Um, you can see the color is off just a touch. I predicted it would be a slightly lighter than the stock color, and it is. Um, I could have put a second or third coat of color over the base, but I think that would have been too dark and would have been much more noticeable. Here, the noticeable edge is really all I have to contend with, and, and I'll do that in the coming days once this cures up, following the instructions very very happy with the smooth flat finish it's every bit as glossy and flat as the stock paint every bit and it feels the same and looks the same uh, so uh, my job now will be just to take that edge down with uh, my buffing wheel and maybe uh, I have actually have 5,000 grit sandpaper if you can believe that just to smooth that out it almost puts a gloss on that edge which is all I'm gonna have to do and uh, I'm so impressed with the paint that I'm thinking I probably could have gotten away with painting the whole side cover. Um, and I may still do that at some point. I'll speak to the owner. 
because what it will do is it will match the color perfectly and there will be no edge whatsoever. So what I would have to do is let this cure up for a week, sand the whole thing down, sand down that edge, uh, reprime just that edge, and then hit the whole thing with 800 grit sandpaper, and then do the complete paint of the side cover and, uh, and tape off the decals. Uh, because I don't think those are reproduced any longer. But uh, anyway, very, very happy. Well, what I have here is a brand new Kawasaki Fender. I spoke to the owner um, just a couple days ago, a few days ago actually, to say that this Fender is probably a little too far gone to, to let it go. There's a crack here on the lip. Other than that, there's no scratches or scuffs, but there's cracks all over it. Um, it's obviously come off and on a few times and whoever had it off didn't do a great job at protecting it so um, there's been a couple little repairs but it, it's cracked up bad enough that it should be properly repaired and then repainted and a proper repair and repainting to order a repaint kit because that wasn't in the budget that's probably going to be another 80 or 90 dollars and uh, we get a brand new one for 140 so it only makes sense that uh, you have one that's painted and ready to roll for $140. I'm not going to throw this out. I'm going to keep it, maybe re repair it and repaint it in time. Um, but I do have this new one, and although it wasn't initially in the budget, it is. We've, we've added it to the budget, and we'll put it on. Unfortunately, put this on, you have to take apart the whole front end again. The wheel and the brakes all have to come off. But uh, anyway, I'll get to that right now.